Man, that is absolutely beautiful. What a vibe. It is, <laughs> uh, I don't really want to pause it that much unless there's crazy changes that I need to comment on with this song. And again, it's a nine-minute jam. Uh, but just, it, just, I am just captivated by that piano with her accompany. And I think that's, those are the only two things. I think perhaps, man. And welcome to the rock radar. My name is Smitty on my quest through space to open rock and roll minds. And that quest today brings me back to Kate Bush who I couldn't be more stoked to revisit. It's been a while, and this will be the latest in chronological order uh, Kate Bush that I have listened to so far and have had the pleasure of listening to so far. Uh, Been way too long since I've got to Kate Bush. What album is this from originally? 50 Words for Snow. Uh, And I live in northern Michigan. I can tell you uh, that is probably true, and half of those are vulgar, at least in the United States. (laughs) But... uh, uh, I did see that this got a remaster or a a reissue. Fifty words for snow. Maybe have had it had a reissue or a remaster. Uh, and this was it was a radio edit. And I said, whoa, 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 we can't do a radio edit. I'm uh, opposed to radio edits. So we're gonna get into the uh, almost ten minute version from the original Fifty Words for Snow, the 2018 remaster from 2011. And uh, yes, the latest i've listened to kate bush i think she had what in 2016 or 2018 i don't know but we're gonna get into it but before we do uh, please consider checking out my other ventures my other channel the smitty learns irish podcast uh where i'm gonna complete my 20-year bucket list dream journey of hiking ireland for a year telling its story town by town doing pub interviews and then of course i have my brand new podcast the weekly smartman show podcast with my good buddy brian We're just talking about all sorts of things on there, different segments, ranty segments, uh, questioning humanity, all sorts of fun stuff. And uh, I do have new links as well as well as my solo What the Hell Everything podcast, where I basically tackle ideas, tell stories and basically try to figure my own brain out in real time for your amusement. So uh, all new links. If you're already following the podcast, you're going to want to click and follow the new one. And uh, please check those links out if you dig what I do at all and want to help me out along the way, including uh, Patreon support. So uh, that's that. Please like and subscribe and follow. And uh, let's continue the Kate Bush journey. Recording date and time, November 14th in northern Michigan. It has not snowed yet. So if this snow, if it snows after I listen to this, that'll mean I made it happen. (laughs) Uh, Snowflake. Before I start this, I do my question going into this, never hearing post 2000s Kate Bush at all. Will it be a more uh, uh, like a uh, much? I expect maturity in songwriting, but I also uh, wonder about the upbeat, dancey vibe that she presents a lot of times, and if she tones that down at all. So if I stop talking, I'll find out.
This is very interesting. I think the, the latest that I've listened to, Kate Bush, 93. Uh, I just looked that up. <laughs> uh, Big Stripey Lie from 93 was the latest I'd listened to Kate Bush. So what is this almost 20 years later? And this is her last studio album I'm looking at. Uh, just the vocal tone change, you know. Women, when women get older, their voices deepen. When men get older, their voices get higher. Uh, so hearing the vocal quality uh, is it, it is so... Uh, there is such a... A tone with that piano especially too uh <laughs> there is a somber tone there is a sultry tone uh, there's a, a deep bassiness not a bassiness there's a bassiness to the music but uh to the vibe you know it's really kind of oh, i don't think it f- sounds dark yet i don't absolutely beautiful what a vibe it is <laughs> uh i don't really want to pause it that much unless there's crazy changes that i need to comment on with this song and again it's a nine minute jam uh but just, it, just i am just captivated by that piano with her accompany and i think that's those are the only two things i think perhaps man came in so subtly uh, man it sounded like it sounded like execution drums uh maybe that's my morbid brain i don't know it sound, sounded like execution drums in the background Sorry, sneeze cut. Uh, I'm looking at the lyrics here, and I'm re- I, I'm fascinated. But whenever I look at the lyrics, I've said this many times. If you've watched, uh, I get dis- distracted super easily because I start thinking about the words, and it starts thinking about whatever. It just <laughs> my brain goes a million different directions. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if this is a uh, if this is a sad or a happy vibe because. It seems nice when you're wading through the snow drifts and you can see horses, but there's broken hearts and things. And I'm trying to figure out if it is, a st- if it, is. I'm trying to figure out the vibe. Thank you. 
nice little fun Pink Floyd trippiness in there too. Her, her hit those notes before.
Man, I got thoughts. I don't like to interpret song meanings ever because, you know, I'm not right a lot. <laughs> but uh, let me back then. Let me go back a little bit because I can bring those lyrics back up again. Shh. I'm trying to figure out if it is a hopeful song or a completely depressed song because it keeps saying, I'll fall you. Uh, no, that, that words. It keeps saying, keep falling, I'll find you. Uh, wait, wait, let me go back. The world is so loud. Keep falling. I'll find you in a moment or two. I'll be with you. It's just like I'm right there with you. It's like, but not like I'm above you. But you think I'm above you. But I'm just as depressed as you are. Don't worry. I'll be there in a second. Is kind of what I'm gathering from that. Maybe, but I don't know if it is if there's a hopefulness to it. I'm trying to figure that out. But. Uh, I don't really like, again, analyzing lyrics, but that's uh, what I thought about that song. And uh, I really enjoyed that, man. Hearing a, a matured Kate Bush, I don't know how old she was in this. I would say in her, f I don't know how old she is now, in her 60s. So she was in her 50s probably uh, when she did that song, just to hear the maturity and the voice, the, ma the, the mature voice. Uh, with them, you know, just that, just that piano, a couple added almost Pink Floydish trippy elements in there that were really fun, added some things to it, but you know, I don't really know how you do a, <laughs> I know the, how they did do a radio edit to get it shorter, but just like the, the story that was told musically throughout it with the changes, subtle changes here and there, it's like, I don't really know why you would want to like <laughs> mess with that. Hey, on my new podcast, The Smartman Show with Brian and Nate, which the title is not indicative of the intelligence of the host. It's just the way our old radio names merge like Voltron, Cartman and Smitty, Smartman, and uh, our actual names are Brian and Nate. And uh, we do have a brand new podcast out. And uh, on this particular clip, we were talking about the Jason Kelsey, former football player, phone spike viral moment. Uh, and it turned into Brian's own moment where we basically said, are we going to call somebody out on their garbage behavior and risk getting shot? And this is that clip audio only. Hopefully you enjoy it. I'm out of here. Uh, thank you. See, I don't. Uh, I think people forget, Smitty, that for like celebrities. OK, we know them. Maybe we think we're buddies with them because we watch all their movies and that we can get away with saying things because we watch their movies or their sports you know events that they're playing in or, or concerts that they're putting on whatever the case may be they don't know who you are okay it's never a situation where they know you as much as you know them right no i feel and honestly us being on the air and doing something of a in a public nature yeah it, have, how many times have you been approached by like a listener who bring up brought up something you said feels or feels like they know you because they've heard you on the radio and then you feel like you got to be th exactly that same way yeah and it's a, i mean on a way grander scale oh yeah this with is... these guys and jason kelsey and taylor swift and all mm -hmm. that shit yeah, I, I can give you one example and this guy has called me back at least once since it happened i was at an event and, uh, you know, I'm a big dude and that's okay. I make jokes about my weight on the air and stuff like that. But this guy, I, I get knocked out of what I'm in. And as I'm walking out, he's like, where are you going, fat boy? Oh my God. And when and how long ago? Uh, this was, it's gotta be 12, 10, 12 years ago. All I know is I ended up pushing him up against a wall and thinking I was going to get fired the next day or arrested because I put my hands on him. But and was like, that was that an event? You said it was, it was at an, an event. event. Yeah, and I was like, "You don't know me. You don't talk to me like that." And uh, that was, and, and it was a couple of years later. I was like asking something on the air about what's something you did that you regret, and I got this call, and he's like, "Yeah, one time I said something I shouldn't have." to a guy on the radio and he got really <laughs> pissed off and I, i'll never forget it dude like That's, i will never forget it it's a core memory now i'll be 93 years old and we still talked, remember him we <laughs> talked last podcast episode where we were talking about you know when is it okay to uh, call somebody out on their shitty behavior. And that's like, a, when are, or when are you going to risk getting shot? 
Yeah. You know, and in that <laughs> fucking moment, dude, honestly, that because what happens if you can effectively point out someone's shitty behavior in a way that makes it awkward and embarrassing. Yeah. And it's the best way to deal with bullies in general. Well, there was a group of people around. And exactly. So because it you was... got to do it in front of people. Yeah. Well, that's and... really the thing. And if you could do that effectively, it really changes. That's how you change bullies mindset and shit. I mean, I hope he does actually feel bad about it in my situation with this situation here. This guy don't care because he's about to make money. And you yeah. know what? I'll be honest, Jason Kelsey. I don't think he cares either. Okay. I'll settle with you. Here's twenty thousand dollars in a new phone. I still made you look like a bitch in front of everybody. <laughs> yeah. And he really did.